Praise the Lord and God bless you. Welcome again to Triumphant Tuesday. This is uh, Midday Manor, and uh, we just come to give you a brief word in the name of Jesus. Uh, miracles are for the, ki the kingdom of God. Um, let's talk about that coming up. Amen. This is 10 Minute Midday Manor clock is ticking but we just want to be a blessing to you on your lunch hour or whenever you're able to view thank you for viewing thank you uh share this with someone let them know uh, what this is if you're on youtube or if you're on instagram or if you're on facebook we're trying to reach you wherever you are share it with somebody don't just be blessed but bless somebody else amen uh, today we want to look at the book of Acts chapter number 3 and uh, look at a situation with the apostles where it says Peter and John were going up to the temple uh, at the hour of prayer hold on for a second here um, which is the ninth hour and a man lame from birth was being carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate to ask alms of those entering the temple Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Um, not This ain't about calling out other preachers, but I heard this uh, preached. I think it was, um, can't think of the preacher's name right now, but I heard this preach one time and it, it pretty much bothered me that someone would say this about um, the Gospels or um, by the work of, of the apostles and they focused on verse six and it said silver and gold have i none if you're looking at king james but such as i have give i unto thee in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk and the message i think it was joel osteen um was uh that peter and john should have been ashamed because they didn't have money and that the people of god should always have money i don't think this statement no i don't think to it this statement wasn't about money this statement wasn't about money. Peter and uh, these guys were fishermen, which wasn't an um, um, an average uh, field at the time. And I don't want to focus too much time on this, but uh, the right fish can bring you a good amount of money if you watch any of those shows. But it wasn't about money. Uh, money wouldn't have done him no good. I mean, come on, think about it now. Money would have just left him in the same situation he is. But God is a God of change. And this man needed a miracle. And by the spirit of God that led Peter and John, they stopped and listened to this man and uh, and and put the name of Jesus on this situation. And he rose up and walked. Now the man can do whatever he want to do because what was hindering him has now been released. So a miracle had come into this man's life. And so... Uh, money just kept him where he was, um, but the presence and the power of God uh, is what changed him. Now he can make money. He can do what he always wanted to do. He can learn. He can go about his life in a way that that little $50 won't do. See, we focus too much on money and not on the presence of God. The church has gotten to be just like any other corporation in America and uh, it's, it's jacked up if I might use some my normal, my, my earthly language. It is. It's jacked up that we got so much money. But the currency that we do have available to us is 
the miracles of God. Just like Elijah and Elisha, uh, they were workers of miracles. These things are not to be taken for granted. When somebody's in a hospital needing prayer, you don't know the full diagnosis. I haven't told my full story from the last few weeks. Um, but when people pray and miracles happen or what could happen doesn't happen, uh, no matter what it looks like, the man was crippled, uh, but God changed him. And so we have to understand that this is this is meat and this is the currency of the kingdom that God will work miracles. Why Elisha and Elisha? Because when they came, miracles happened. And even Elisha more so than Elijah worked miracles like this that hit people individually. Elijah was focused on bringing the nation back to God. But when he brought them back to God and when people's minds were turned toward God, Elisha was able to come through and show that God cared about our individual situations and cared about the acts that we lost in the water, cared about uh, the food that we are lacked and things of that nature. And so he cared about us on a personal level. And so when the presence of God comes, miracles happen, things that affect us on our individual levels. I may never fully understand what you went through, what you're going through, the tears you cry at night, but God will touch you right where you are if you give your life to him. Uh, another scripture I'm looking at is out of the book of Mark. Um, it is the Great Commission. And it said that uh, he said to you, go into all the word and preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. But who, I'm sorry, I'm reading two different verses. I'm, I'm quoting uh, King James and reading uh, uh, English Standard. But, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will be made well. And so these signs, these miracles, these wonders will follow them that believe. Now, is this just, oh, I believe in God? No. It's talking about a relational belief because what did it say earlier is they believe in his baptized will be saved. Um, that's relational. You can believe in Jesus Christ all day long, but you got to move in that direction of what that belief entails. And that's baptism and that's baptism in water, baptism in spirit, baptism in uh, literal water and baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so. You who believe and then on that track, and it says believe, you who believe will see these things that happen. Now, you got to understand uh, 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 these things come by the moving of the spirit. The spirit is the orchestrator of the church. You just can't decide that you're going to grab a snake. But if you ever grab a snake, um, just like Paul was an example of in the word, and it happens to bite you. And we've had those testimonies where people were bitten by snakes and should have been gone, but they were able uh, to survive. And some survived long enough to get to a hospital, which was a long way away or things of that nature. Uh, and so, so it's just an example of things that uh, God would do. So miracles are uh, also, you know, we look at the uh, tongues. Tongues is a miracle, speaking in the language that God gives you. Uh, it's not something just to say to make your sermon sound good. Or make and act people and folk joke about it too much, but it is an actual miracle of God. Um, people can try to harm you with poison and it won't work, but you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Or in this translation, they will be made well. And we pray and we we do these things and uh, sicknesses and things are return are turned around and people come out and overcome by the power of prayer. Uh, cancer diagnoses are way off by decades because of prayer. Um, prayer <laughs> does this, uh, does that, and it's that relationship with God. And why is that so important? It shows that he is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And when God is with us, these things follow. They accompany uh, the presence of God. When we open our heart to God, when we give our life to God, why don't you give your life to God today? I know you've talked about it. I know you've thought about it. I know you've 
mentioned it, but give your life to God fully. Find a pastor. I know we have a lot of bad things said about pastors and money and women and things of that nature, but find a true pastor with a family that is living right, that God leads you to, where you feel that connection to. And uh, I hope it's Triumph Church. Man, I strive as I be I strive as much as I can to be the vessel to give you the truth and the word of God and to live it as much and as best I can. But find it and allow God's presence to come into your life. This is the day. Harden not your heart. As you sing a song while the blood is running warm in your veins. God bless you. That's my time. I'm old to it. Uh, and uh, heaven smile upon you. Our church information is across the bottom of your screen. You can pause it or come back to it. Our social media, and my name is right there too. Uh, come on and join us in Vinton, Virginia, the Roanoke Valley. If you're in the New River Valley or surrounding areas, if you feel like driving that far, it'll be worth it. God bless you. It'll be eternally worth it. Heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>